The Ball Door is brought to you by Suzuki. Ride the winds of change. Hello, I'm Clyde James McNeil. Welcome to the 61st Ball Door since 1922. One of the greatest motorcycle races in the world. Around about an 85,000 crowd here with about 40,000 motorbikes coming down to the track just to watch and in pole position for this round of the endurance championships doug poland peter goddard and gilles fersler has been drafted into the team on the castrol suzuki motorbike in second place in qualifying dorjex brian morrison and terry reimer on the big number one kawasaki lavier costes and miguel duhamel on the number three honda and uh, in fourth place in qualifying, Delatang, Ruggia and Fujiwara on the motor front, Yamaha. Gomez, Cotel and Bunei on another Suzuki, Castrol Suzuki in fifth place. Steve Hislop replacing Neil McKenzie who broke a wrist. Crystal Lindholm and Van der Bosch in sixth on the grid. That's how they'll start out. In this race today, a lot of warming up to do. And it's been rumored in the pits that uh, the Suzuki of Poland got out of first lap were running a qualifying engine very, very fast around the track. But if it's the same engine, will it hold up during a race? The Patrouille de France, the top French pilots going over and giving a little bit of a display before the start of this race. Everybody's ready to go. The flag waves, the French flag waves in the breeze. The riders jump onto their machines. And the Honda gets away in first place. The number three bike of Lavier Costes and Miguel de Hamel. Well away down the track as they'll sort themselves out very early days. A 24 hour race ahead. And this Honda awesomely fast in a straight line. Straight into the lead they go. Already pulled out a bit of a gap. That's what they'll want to do all the way through this race. Remember, the adrenaline is running hot at the beginning of this race. Everybody in short track mode for a little while. And at their best, a couple of fastest laps will be set at the beginning of this race, but expect a couple of falls as well as the adrenaline gets the better of some of the uh, lower ranked riders. 18 super bikes, 26 stock sport bikes and nine super sport 600s or ducati 748s which are allowed in the uh, super sport class to go through 24 hours of hard racing ahead for teams of three and one or two teams of two as well hoping to keep it all together all the way through this track and all the way through the race also having a look down lower orders in uh, in some of the privateer teams, phase one, Kawasaki of Andrew Stroud, Jason Pridmore and Brett Sampson hoping to do very well here, as is the 3 till 3 superbike team of Roger Smith, Ian Cobby and Dan Harris. And the Motomax Sanyo Honda VTR 1000 of Paul Mara Brown, dominant is the 600 series, a four times UK 250 champ. Dean Thomas, 600 series rider as well, and Steve Plater all hoping to do well and there's an all-female team here as well look out for bike number 72 all girls running a CBR 600 here but that's your current leader Miguel de Hamel, William Costes and Lavier First lap is under their belts. Hart starting to settle into a steady beat here, except for one or two who's still in short track mode. And that's the standings as they cross the line. Lavier Costes and Duhamel in first place. Poland Goddard in first lap in second. A Ducati Z DM in third. Then the other Suzuki. That's the way they stand at the moment, having a look at one of these Suzukis and the two Yamaha Motor France bikes racing here. Steve Hislop hoping for good news from the Yamaha. He's in with Crystal Lindholm, who's the German Superbike champion, 31 years old, and the uh, German champion for the second time running, even though he's Swedish. And the best lap already set from a Suzuki, two minutes. 
And that's got to be Poland Goddard and first lap. In qualifying, they'd have 1 minute 58.6. And then second qualifying, 1 minute 57.9. A streaming engine around the Paul Ricard circuits. But word has it that it was a qualifying engine. Not definite. Nobody really knows for sure. But if it was a race en engine, it's certainly fast around here. Already getting the bike on the move is Doug Poland. There are the two Yamahas. Now, what the Yamahas are waiting for in this race is for the Suzuki's not to finish, because that's the only way that Yamaha will have a chance at the Manufacturers' Championship here. Steve Hislop's helmet on number four, easily recognisable. And you'll see right behind him, the number one bike and Terry Reimer. Oh, we have a faller already. Number 35, that's Dobe, Hakin and Almerick, the Moto Shop 35 bike. Off already, mega problems for him. He's got to get that bike back to the pits, have a lot of time. And now the Kawasaki, waiting for that Kawasaki to unleash itself. 1 minute 59.6, but remember in qualifying, the Suzuki did 1 minute 57.9. But that stands as the fastest lap. Terry Reimer certainly cracking on here, first rider on the bike. But that's, no, it's not your leader. They're very difficult to tell apart. That's the Dafix Honda. A couple of more bikes down, number 72. That's the LMS Echo bike. The all-female team I was telling you about. Uh, Pat Patricia Bodard, Marlene Dallemang, and Marie-Pierre Vintaya on the CBR 600 Supersport. The other bike down, the Pio Brothers and Oliver Four, a VTR 1000, the top Moto Tarbs Dax team. And look at that. Poland and Goddard and Firstler. Their team bike has gone into the lead. It's a screaming bike, and the Honda really wants to chase them down. And that's it, Poland got out and first let in the lead after five laps, then the big Honda, then Delatang Ruggio Fujiwara, the first Yamaha to come across the line. The Yamahas both together here. And the Yamaha already being passed by Terry Reimer. The Honda's got back in front. A short circuit battle at the start of this race. But the Honda devastatingly quick down the straight here. Can't seem to hold the speed in the corners, and the Suzuki very good around bends. And lurking in the background, Terry Reimer on the number one Kawasaki. Motor France Kawasaki having major problems in endurance racing earlier on in the season. Conrod going at Le Mans. Dropping out with half an hour to go at Spa and dropping out only half an hour into the race at Suzuka. And hopefully that the Kawasaki can keep it all together here. Terry Reimer with his head down, the Honda in front, Suzuki. It's the big four battling it out of the early stages of this race. Honda, Suzuki, Kawasaki and Yamaha all together. On the track, the Honda leading at the moment. This is the battle you're seeing, but early days yet. 24 hours to go in this race. Almost short circuit stuff. Looks like it's going to be a very fast run race, this. They keep this up for 24 hours, I don't think they can, but even through the night, records can be set. That's the 35 in the pits, the Philip Dobe Motor Shop 35 E-Gold Kawasaki ZXR. Had a crash, had problems, got to fix it and get back out there again because you never know what's going to happen to the rest of these teams.
could almost be a procession of bikes that you really wish you had in your garage. The big Honda RC45, very expensive for a road bike, but very good indeed and immensely quick. Oh, Kawasaki going for it now. All squashed together on the track. This could be dangerous. You really want to be careful around here. You have 24 hours to do it in. Shouldn't be all over in the first half an hour. Terry Reimer hunting down the Suzuki. But the Honda's still leading, but 24 hours to go, and you can't say that they're leading by much, not in a 24-hour race. Already some of the slower men are coming into view. I should be careful when I say men, there are women in the race as well. The number 72 bike that you saw crash. They'll take that back to the pits and hope to get it going again. Nobody's going to give up that easily. The Honda, Duhamel, Costes and Lavier in front of Doug Polar, Peter Goddard, and Gilles Fersler, Suzuki. Not too sure who's on the bike for the start of this race, but I do know it's Terry Reimer on the Kawasaki and dispensing with a couple of the back markers here. What a shock as the Honda blasts past. And welcome back as this race is being led by the Honda at Le Castellet. The ball door is well underway now. Honda in first place, just briefly passed by the Suzuki. Doug Poland, Peter Goddard and Gilles Firstler. Gilles being drafted in for this event, but seven times he's been in the bowl before. 35, that's the Dobe Motorshop 35 Kawasaki. After its crash, has to come back in the pits again. Oh, and somebody's broken down. Who is it? It's the number two bike. Jean-Michel Delatang. John Philip Ruggier and Norihiko Fujiwara running this one. A problem with that bike. And it was a lot earlier that uh, it went down, actually. He's had to run a long way with that bike, all the way from around the other side of the circuit, and he still can't get across the track as the other bike scream across. Got some room, got to push that into the pits to get it started again. Very bad news for Yamaha. Yamaha Motor France team hoping for full points here to have a chance at the Constructors' Championships. That thing's got to go back to the pits and be looked at very, very quickly. This is your leading man. The number three bike, the Honda France, the Elf Honda France entry, the RVF RC45. Massively quick bike, but very tricky in corners. Miguel Duhamel, it's his sixth time at the bowl. He won way back in 1991, second in 89, fifth in 1990. William Costes partnering him. It's his third time at the ball, and he was on a winner too last year in 96. And Christian Lave also along with Costes. And Lavier really knows this track well. He must do it. It's his tenth time here. but it seems that we've lost the charge of the Kawasaki. Quick close-up of the number five machine. Suzuki Castrol hoping for good things here. They've had some decent wins, except for Suzuka. Fifth at Suzuka eight-hour race. That was won by Honda, Sinichi Ito and Toru, Toru Ukawa bringing that one home. But with a massive points lead in the championship already. And I remember hearing this one screaming down the straights at Le Mans for the first ever outing this year in endurance. It was awesome, the sound that came out of that exhaust. Dispensing with a few back markers here. But it's not lapping at anywhere near its pole setting time. 
in the pits with the number three Honda, leading Honda. And the pit stops being practiced more and more in this event in endurance, trying to get the tires, tires on and refueled as quickly as possible. And word has it that the big Kawasaki has got it down to a fine arts. Terry Reimer, Dorjex, and Morrison being able to get that bike into the pits. Two new tyres, actually whole new wheels, and fully fueled within 12 seconds. Those are the standings at the moment. Terry Reimer having his sixth time here at the bowl, a winner twice, back in 92 and 95. Jehan Dorgex, sorry, Dorgex, got to get that right, seven times at the ball and a winner in 95. Brian Morrison hasn't yet won here, although he's been here six times. Best finish for Brian Morrison is third back in 1991. Oh, nasty little get off. That's the Moto Depot Garak. Bike, Suzuki GSX-R750. And an unforced error, I think they call it. Having a good close-up of the Suzuki of Poland Goddard and Firstler here. On a charge, doesn't want to let the Honda get away, but the Honda is in front at the moment, and that's what has to be hunted down. close up of if you can get really close to that you see they had the guards on the chain now nearly all the bikes have those guards on to stop your foot getting caught in the chain Daryl Beatty can tell you about that losing all his toes in the chain of a bike a while ago there's that guard quick release for the wheel as well the number two bike in the pits De La Tang Ruggia and Fujiwara's YZF SP750, Yamaha Motor France team. And that's how quick it is. Oh no. He fell earlier on in the race. This is a Team DAP Moto 91 Honda VTR 1000. Fell a little bit earlier on in the race. And if you have a look closely, you can see the front brake lever flapping away in the breeze. He's been around, he's got to get that V-twin back to the pits, but can only use his rear brake lever. And there's the big Kawasaki, the one we're looking for. Terry Reimer riding it at the moment. And hoping against hope that he doesn't uh, have any mechanical problems through this race, which have dogged them all the way through. Le Mans, the exhaust problems at a broken Conrad at Spa, the engine blew. With half an hour to go while they were in the lead. And at Suzuka, they hold the radiator. And having problems with the locking rear wheel as well, only half an hour into the race. 24 hours is hard on these machines. They're not full-on superbike machines. The superbike machine would just blow up after about 35 laps. These ones are a lot stronger, just slightly less powerful. Less powerful, but built to last and last and last if you get it all right. But the the pilots are really using the engines all the time for 24 hours. And some bikes cry mercy well before then. Still trying to chase down the Honda is Doug Poland and Peter Goddard. Gilles Firstler, must admit, I don't know too much about the man. Drafted in at the last moment for the Suzuki team.
That's the Kawasaki. What was I saying about their mechanical gremlins? The clutch all over the floor, having a look inside the transmission. Obviously something wrong with that. Morrison, Reimer and Dorjex's Kawasaki having problems yet again. This is just what they didn't need, and this early in the race as well. The Giel motorcycle team, Kawasaki ZX7R, Christoph Giel running this. He's been running at the ball and doing endurance for quite a while now. Partnered with Andre Luciana and Sebastian Scarnato. One of the top privateers, and uh, well, I, I suppose that you could call them privateers, but they do get a lot of help, and they're massively professional. Steve Hislop, Crystal Lindholm, and Van der Bosch on one of the two Yamaha Motor France YZF SPs. The 750, of course. And in a battle with the number six, you could call it the second string Suzuki, but I wouldn't dare. Gomez Kutel Bonoy, Bruno Bonoy on the Suzuki Castrol number six there. Standings after three and a half hours, still Lavier, Costes and Duhamel in the leads. Poland and Goddard in second, Gomez Kutel and Bonoy, both the Suzukis having good places here. Steve Hislop keeping up the charge in fourth. But it's not Steve Hislop on the bike at the moment. Got to give the other riders a chance, most definitely. But Steve Hislop drafted in at the last moment. It was supposed to be Neil McKenzie's ride. But Neil McKenzie broke his wrist back at Cadwell. And although it's mending nicely, 24 hours of racing on a recently broken wrist is something that you don't want to do. The big Kawasaki dispensing with some of the lower orders, giving them short shrift and blasting past. You really do get whopped to the side from the wind when uh, one of these fiercely ridden machines goes past. Everybody going into that corner really hard and the back wheels bobbling around on the track. Real hard braking into there, get the power down as early as possible. Doesn't matter how short the straight is to the next corner. Somebody else is down. Don't know who it is, can't see the number. But still, four hours on into the race, and still people are dumping it. But it's nice to see that they got their clutch problem sorted out, put a whole new clutch unit into the transmission. And the Kawasaki having to charge back. They're with the leader at the moment. But they're a long way down. Spent nine minutes in the pit sorting their transmission. But let's see what they can do up against the Honda. Now, this is a good chance to see the relative speed of the Honda and the Kawasaki around the twisties and down the straights. The Honda France Elf machine. And the Kawasaki tucked in the windscreen. more damaged machinery being taken back that one might go back to the pits but i doubt very much if they'll get it racing again getting a little bit dusty out there people starting to put their lights on and that's a good sign that the kawasaki can unlap itself but it's got a lot of times to do that A lot of parties at this track, 24 hours they do it, and 24 hours the spectators party as well. As the lights come on, it gets very difficult to see the numbers, and you really have to be close to a monitor. A lot of people actually spend the entire night camped out next to a monitor to see how their favourite teams are doing. 8pm, sun's going down, lights come on, and the racers get on with the job. Even during the nights, no quarter at all given. And people still making stupid short-circuit accidents. Front end, let's go, and a low side into the corner. 
and Siciliani, Tranois and Dario Marchetti in National Motos RC45 Honda. The National Motos have got two of these bikes in the race and they weren't expected to make silly little accidents like that. Le Castellet at night. And the Honda still leads. Going to go all the way through the night, trying to keep up that lead and stretch it. But if you notice that the Honda, sorry, the Kawasaki came past it earlier on, has a few laps to make up here. It's faster, but will it have the time to do it? To catch the Honda? And will the bike itself stand the pace? This is the time when you can really start to concentrate on it. Team 3 till 3, Superbike Magazine, Yamaha YZF750, Roger Smith, Ian Cobby and Dan Harris, one of the privateers, hoping to do very well here, number 16. 10 to 11 at night, and that is the standings after 168. Lats Lavier, the Honda in first place, Poland in second place, the other Suzuki in third, then comes the Yamaha, and then that big Kawasaki trying to chase down the leaders. Four laps down, still got a long time to go. Long hard night, the Honda is still leading at the ball door. At Le Castellet, it's been hard, but they have kept up the pressure all the way through the evening, and the pressure has told as some of the teams out at 20 past midnight with fuel pump failure. The Motormax Sanyo Honda Britain VTR 1000 of Paul Brown, Dean Thomas, and Steve Plater. Their race has been run. They had to pull out throughout the nights, and also sad to see the loss yet again of phase one endurance out at two minutes to five in the morning with engine problems andrew stroud brett sanson and jason pridmore a really fast team there but unfortunately mechanical gremlins let them down again but this is the bike that's been chasing very very hard brian morrison with Terry Reimer, we're watching Terry Reimer on the Kawasaki. Brian Morrison, who was champion of the world last year. Brian, you were uh, world champion uh, last year. This year for you, 97 is a little bit uh, disappointment. Yeah, of course, we didn't have any points uh, before the ball door. We have a problem in Le Mans with the engine, and again in Spa, only half an hour before the end, we were leading. So, uh, of course, it's a disappointment. At this one, uh, this race, today you think you have still a chance to, to win in a few hours? We always have a chance. We had some problems in the beginning with the clutch. We have to change and lose uh, 10, 12 minutes on the other teams, but we're pushing hard, and Honda is only three laps in front and uh, still five hours to go. If I can stay awake, we should be okay. Of course he can stay awake, but he's not on the bike at the moment. It's big tell. Terry Reimer from London is on the bike and chasing hard. They're both riding really fast. And also setting a fastest lap this morning. The number four machine of Steve Hislop, Crystal Lindholm and Van der Bosch ranking third. That Yamaha still going. But the news is that the other Yamaha, the one with Jean-Philippe Rougier on it, is out, crashed and didn't get restarted. So there's only one Yamaha left in the race. Also still doing well, the semi-official Dafix Honda. 13 laps or, or more down on the uh, leading RVF, but uh, hunted down by the number 94 Kawasaki. Another privateer. The privateer is having a very good battle in single figures here. But lots of problems for Suzuki. Bah, on a eu surtout un problème il y a quelques instants, Dominique Melian avec la Suzuki numéro 5 qui s'arrêtait quelques Dominique Melian was asked, had a, had a problem a couple of minutes ago with the Suzuki number 5, which stopped for a couple of minutes. Did the repairs go well? What happened? And he says, well, the repair was not too heavy, it was just a pipe. 
the exhaust pipe which had broken but to change it we had to take off the radiator that takes a long time it cost us eight minutes out on the track but the bike is back on the track and everything should be fine now and he's asked there's Go Gomez on one of the Suzuki's and Poland and, and Goddard on the other one do you think the uh, Poland Goddard pairing is best he said it's true they don't have um, they're not as fast as the uh, Poland Goddard combination but the gap is small still leading the race though the Honda very fast in a straight line but slightly suspect through the corners Lavier, Costes and Duhamel Miguel Duhamel still leading. And what do Honda think about what's happening? I'm now with uh, the boss of Honda France, Pierre Laurent Chauvet. Pierre Laurent, perhaps uh, for you, second win in a row here in, uh, in the Boulder. Yes, uh, we have a very, very good uh, team, uh, very good riders, and very good technicians. And I, I hope you can repeat our victory from last year. I guess uh, for, is that for you uh, a win here in the Boulder in the Castle just a few days before the Salon de la Moto will be something very important? Uh, of course, and uh, Honda introduced uh, 15 new models in the Paris show, and also uh, the next year is the uh, 50th anniversary of uh, our company. I think if you can win, everybody is very, very happy. Oh, yes, and that's what they're aiming for as well, the RVF RC45 of Lavier, Costes and Duhamel still in the lead but being chased down now and this is how they're running at the moment the Honda still in the lead but Morrison and Reimer and Dorjek's combination just three laps down and chasing them down Steve Hislop and the team on the sole remaining works Yamaha is in third place the other Suzuki in fourth Poland got out in first floor after that stopping that um, Stopping to change their exhaust system down in fifth place and trying hard to get back in contention for the lead and stay Dossage and the Dafix RC45. They call it a privateer team, but let's call it semi-private because they do get a lot of help being chased down by Team Gio. The Team Gio. Real privateer machine. The number 92 private machine, which is really running hard. That's the Dafix Honda that you're seeing there. Not strictly speaking, a private machine. And once again, it's Honda and Kawasaki together on the track. The Kawasaki trying to unlap itself. But look at the speed of the Honda in a straight line. There is no way that the Kawasaki can live with it down the straights, but you get into the corners and things change. Team Kawasaki France bike closing right up. Look at the back wheel coming off the ground of the Honda. Serious hard braking into that corner. And having to be driven really hard here to hold off the charge of the Kawasaki. The thing is, it'll have to be ridden really hard all the way through this race, because the Kawasaki is gaining and will soon pass the Honda, I'm sure. Not on a straight, though. Front wheel of both bikes lift as they get the power on as early as possible. The bike rotates around its axis throwing the front up into the air Kawasaki trying to get into the slipstream and pass it but the Honda holds him off into that corner at least but you get to the twisty parts of the track and there goes the Kawasaki unlapping himself the Honda though I must remind you still in the leads it's just up to the Motor France Kawasaki to keep doing that keep extending that Trying to unlap himself time after time after time. And basically pressure the Honda.
The Honda France Elf machine being thrust across, across the front of the Kawasaki. But the Kawasaki able to nip up the inside turns really well, this machine. And take the Honda into the next corner. Time for a pit stop. Things are getting tight now. Driver change at Lavier. Just about to get onto the machine. Watch how quick these things are dumped. Loads of fuel into the tank. Wait until it comes up the return pipe. Wop the back wheel on. Single, single swing arm, single sided swing arm to make the wheel easier to take off and put on. And meanwhile, while they're in the pits, the big Kawasaki can try to make up time. Hoping against hope that everything will stay together. Oh, they spotted a problem on the Honda. Fairing comes off, somebody's had a look at the radiator. It seems that there's a hole in the radiator. Some stone has hit it and hold it. And this is one thing that Honda really didn't want to happen, leading the race. And they've been hit by mechanical gremlins as well. As the Kawasaki comes, up, comes in for a scheduled pit stop here, the Honda is still in. Radiator has to be repaired, otherwise it'll just overheat and the engine will blow. And while the mechanics work desperately on the cooling system for the Honda, the big Kawasaki into the pits and out again. This is their chance to make up as much time as possible on the lead that the Honda still has. And remember the Kawasaki was in the pits for eight or nine minutes earlier on in the race before the night, replacing a clutch. They're one lap down, but the Honda is out. It's been fixed. Lavier has to get on that Honda and get it working. Get it going. He's out. They changed the tires. Repaired the hole in the radiator. Now the Honda has got to get out there. He's out in front. Still in front of the Kawasaki. By just under a lap. And Lavier has really got to push hard now. Doesn't want that Kawasaki to catch him. Don't want to get the Kawasaki. Give the Kawasaki a sight of you. The number four Yamaha going through. Still in third place. Now he'll know as he's gone past his pit boards what has been happening and the time difference between him and the Honda. Hunting down the... Oh, no! Lavier has dropped it! Things go from just bad to worse. A small... A small drop, not a bad crash there. But it's been down, and that will cut the time down even more. He will have to go back to the pits. Give the bike the once-over. Somebody else down as well. As the number 44 machine, the Coupe Ducati. Club Moto 1748 Ducati. Lavier coming round with a small crash. Obviously, must have done a small bit of damage to the bike. Let's hope it is small. But again, this will allow the Kawasaki to sneak by because they weren't far behind. Straight into the pits he goes. Put it on the stand. Let's have a look at any damage from that low side. Now, Lavier pushing too hard, obviously, on not only cold but brand new tyres. And the news from the pits was it was because of the tyres that he crashed. Complained that the tyres were far too hard. And that's what made him crash. Bit of light damage. They've got to get that Honda out as soon as possible. 
because the Kawasaki has now gone into the leads. Lavier back on the Honda. Getty going out. And now Lavier has got his work cut out because the Kawasaki is now leading the ball door. Dorje, or should I call it Dorjex, Brian Morrison and Terry Reimer out in front of the Honda, relegated to second. Suzuki, ride the winds of change. Welcome back to the ball. It's 10 to 1 in the afternoon and the big Kawasaki is still leading. Honda trying desperately and all they know to shorten this gap. But the Kawasaki still the fastest out there. They've got the fastest lap as well, 159.2. What happened to these 157s that we were seeing from the Suzuki? Could it be true that they were actually using a qualifying engine because they haven't come anywhere close to this Kawasaki? All it takes now is for the Kawasaki to hold together for the rest of the race. But the Honda... Massively fast in a straight line, but can they keep that speed going and catch the Kawasaki? Bad news is that at 10 to 12, out with engine problems, goes the last British Hope team, 3 till 3, Superbike magazine of Roger Smith, Ian Cobby and Dan Harris, the Yamaha YZF 750, giving up the ghost at 10 to 12. But somebody who hasn't given up the ghost, the all-female team, CBR 600, in super sport, Patricia Bodard, Marlene Dallemang, and Marie-Pierre Vintaya. The LMS ACO bike is doing very well indeed. There they are in third place. 31 laps down, but still with a chance of a podium place here. An all-female team at the bowl in super sport. And remember, they crashed earlier on, so who would know where they'd be? if they hadn't had that early race crash. Now, have we got anybody in the UK willing to field an all-female team in endurance? I'm sure we have. Take the French on and beat them. Number 38, sorry, 33 in Super Sport, Bruno Destoup, Henny Knott and Tijera. They're the ones who are leading. But very soon, they'll have to start looking over their shoulder. For the girls are coming. Three different races going on here. The Stock Sport, the Super Sport, and the Superbike race. And each winner, the winner of each gets their own podium as well. As it stands at the moment, it looks like the girls are going to get a podium finish in the Super Sport. Looking at number 38 now, Conzin, Couturier, and Marchand. The Endurance Moto Honda RC45, it's stock sport, not super sports. And these are the standings, they are leading. Two GSXRs there with a the chance of podiums as well, and a Honda VTR 1000. Nice to see the, uh, the V-Twin from Honda starting to do well in racing. But these are the leaders in the stock sport class. There's an RC45, but it's nowhere near as tweaked as the big, booming RC45s in the Superbike class. A reminder, in the superbikes, the Honda was leading for most of this race, had to go into the pits with a hold radiator. That was fixed, went back out with brand new tires. And now, look at it, they're together on the track. But I will remind you that the Honda is one lap down. Desperate to unlap himself and come back at the Kawasaki. Kawasaki leading, Honda in second place. See the way that wheel twitches as he goes off the ground. This is where tactics come into play. A lot of sliding on that rear wheel. Forcing this bike to perform at its utmost. Everything and anything to try to catch the Kawasaki, that's a lap ahead of it, just under a lap ahead now. 
But the Kawasaki team manager, Christian Bourgeois, knows what he has to do. Look at how hard you have to go into the corner to pass the Kawasaki. Back wheel skipping, somebody taking absolutely no notice at all. Over in the pits, Terry Reimer gets off the bike. A big Kawasaki. And we're coming down to the last 10 minutes of the race. They put the French rider on. Jehan Dorjex goes on to the Kawasaki, still leading this race. One minute, 35 seconds ahead of the Honda. But can Honda do anything about this? They are faster. A driver change, tyre change and a fuel stop for the Kawasaki, but no such mucking around for Honda. Quick dump of fuel, and it's Miguel Duhamel on the bike who goes out. Forget about the tyres, we've got 10 minutes left. I have just got to try to catch that Kawasaki. But it's Dorjex on the Kawasaki who knows what he's got to do. The bike has got to hold together. The crowd are sensing a win here for Kawasaki. But it's not all over until that you pass the flag. Not even until you see the flag, until you pass the flag. The Honda all the time putting in faster and faster laps. Five seconds a lap. The time goes down to 1.31 and then 1.25, the gap between the Kawasaki and the Honda. Miguel Duhamel taking the Honda out for the last time, but unable to catch the Kawasaki, which crosses the line. A memorable win here. Brian Morrison's first win at the Bull Door. Jehan Dorjex brings it across the line. Second time winner for him here. And Terry Reimer, got to be jumping because he's got his hat-trick here. A win in 92, a win in 95, and now a win in 97. The Team Kawasaki France have put all their problems behind them. A very, very fast chase at the end of this. As Miguel Duhamel also comes home only one minute behind the Kawasaki. After 24 hours of racing, it is that close. Miguel de Hamel, but he knows it's got to be all over. He'll see the crowds. Bring it home, but he does bring it home just one minute behind the Kawasaki. And a really good job, too, for the Yamaha Motor France team. Steve Hislop, Crystal Lindholm, and Van der Bosch coming home in third. Podiums for Brian Morrison, Terry Reimer, and Dorjex in first. And right at this moment, the first thing they're thinking of is not sleep, I can tell you. The Suzuki's not even featuring on the podium this time. Gomez, Kotel, and Bonoy coming home in fourth place. And Poland and Goddard's coming home in fifth. First lap was out of the race for a couple of hours. They said he was much too slow. That is the final standing. So Doug Poland and Peter Goddard trying hard to get the Suzuki back into, into contention after dropping a lot of time changing their exhaust. But that's it. It's all over now. And Kawasaki have got the win. They so richly deserved. Put a lot of work in through this, this whole season. And major problems assaulted them throughout the races, but finally it's all behind them now. Brian Morrison holding the cup. Big Terry Reimer waving. And Jehan Dorje behind them. Got the flowers, got the cups. Keeping their helmets, thank you very much. And finally, finally, they've got that win. One final picture of big Terry Reimer thrusting this Kawasaki around the circuit. The winners here at the ball for 1997 Kawasaki. The Bull Door was brought to you by Suzuki. Ride the winds of change.